So we've been given the, the implicit function 3x minus tan y equals 4, and we're asked to find dy by dx. So we have to differentiate this implicitly and generate the y prime value, which is our dy by dx. So differentiating this expression, I'm going to end up with 3 minus derivative of tan is secant squared, the variable's y. So as I differentiate seek a function of y, I need to then apply the chain rule, which is y prime or dy by dx. That's equal to, and I have to differentiate the other side of the equation, equal to 0. So now I can isolate my dy by dx, so I end up with 3 is equal to positive secant squared y times dy by dx. Solving for dy by dx, I end up with 3 over secant squared y. So in terms of y, that looks good. It doesn't match any of these, but I can easily convert this. Since secant is a reciprocal function of cosine, I can just bring the cosine into the numerator, and that gives us the answer b. For number 13, it says, for time is greater than 1, particles moving along the x-axis given the p function, root t minus 2. And so in the time interval from 1 to 16, when is the instantaneous velocity equal to the average velocity? Okay, so the average velocity is the same as average slope. Okay, so because that's a p function, the velocity, the slope of that is the velocity function, so average slope. Okay, since it's continuous, we can, the root function is continuous function in that interval, we can calculate average slope, and it looks like this, so the average slope is equal to p16 minus p at 1 over 15, or sorry, 16 minus 1. So that's going to be a square root of 16 minus 2. The minus 2 is always cancel out. Square root of 16, sorry, square root of 1 minus 2. Make sure that's in brackets. So the minus 2s cancel out. And that's all over 15. So I end up with square root 4, that becomes 4 minus 1, so 3 over 15. Okay, so then that is my average slope, or my average velocity. Now, I want to know when the instantaneous velocity is equal to that. Well, for instantaneous velocity, I need a derivative. Okay, so there's my derivative function. I need to make that derivative equal to my average slope and then solve for the time at which this happens. So I'm just going to simplify this. 3 over 15 becomes 1 over 5. I'm going to solve that equation for t. So root, I get 5 over 2 equals square root t. Square both sides. Okay, so t is equal to 25 over 4. The answer is c. For question number 14, this f is a differentiable function, and we're trying to find dy by dx. This really is a problem where I have to differentiate notation, and I have embedded functions, so I need to apply chain rule. So my derivative here, dy by dx, I differentiate the outside cosine and I end up with f of x squared. I need to go differentiate the next layer. Well, I don't know what f is, so I need to just differentiate as notation. Now I have another embedded function, so I need to then differentiate the x squared as a chain as 2x. So there's my derivative. Now I need to evaluate this derivative 
at x equals 3. That means I just plug 3 into this expression. And notice that the answers all have uh, f parts in it because we don't know what f is and we cannot figure out our f values when we have our inputs. So I just need to substitute and evaluate what I can. So here I'm going to end up with f of x squared. Well, x is 3, so we know that's going to be 9. So cosine of f of 9 times the derivative when x squared, so that's going to be the input is 9. Here we can actually substitute and we get 2 times 3 equals 6. So rearranging this, the answer looks like it's going to be D, but I'm just going to rearrange it, make sure it works out. So 6, just rearranging my factors, times F prime 9, yeah, that's right, times cosine of inside, that's going to be just F of 9. Okay, so the answer is D.